buck and bank. The price of gold is steady today amid firmer equities with safe haven demand for the metal. Spot gold is unchanged at 1,331,011 1, cents an ounce in early trade. U.S. gold futures for December delivery were up 0.2 percent at $1,335.80 an ounce. Nigeria is seeing positive trade balance due to rising exports and falling imports as the National Bureau of Statistics reports a merchandise trade value of 5.69 billion naira for the second quarter of 2017. The report released today shows a slight increase of 7.7% from the value of 5.29 billion naira recorded in the preceding quarter as total exports stood at 3.1 billion naira. While trade import is put at 2.59 billion naira for the period, trade export rose 3.2% on a quarterly basis. A trade surplus of 506.5 billion naira was recorded in the period, 29.6% lower compared to the previous quarter. A sectoral breakdown of the total trade shows crude oil represents 42.57%, while manufactured goods and other oil products scalped 21.86%, and 21.91% each as agriculture products take 4.6%. In the meantime, a traditional staple meal made from maize or sorghum and consumed widely across Africa in different forms has been sold in Nigeria in a labeled convenient pack. An entrepreneur, Ijeoma Undukwe, has big plans to take this simple porridge to Nigeria's huge diaspora population with an insatiable taste for home. A factory worker checks the tenderness of maize that has been soaked to the ground into one of Nigeria's most popular breakfasts. This local pack is prepared and sold as a sour paste. At Buba's Foods, Nigerian pap, a traditional meal consumed since maize was introduced into the continent hundreds of years ago, will be packaged in airtight containers for sale. Ijeo Mountain Dukwe. A busy mother of three said she started Bibes Foods to cut out the hustle of soaking and milling the maize at home, a process that can take days to achieve the desired taste and consistency. I thought about it, that there were several mothers like me who wanted to give their kids this staple, this traditional meal that we all grew up taking. But, you know, there were busy moms working to support the family and didn't have exactly the time to process the meal for their children. I figured that I could be a bridge between the meal and the mothers, thereby providing convenience and hygiene for the staple meal called pap. Pap can be made from millet, maize or sorghum and is best enjoyed with a bean cake called akara. Kingsley Ohazu says this staple meal is filling and affordable. It's about 50 naira and when you take it with akara, maybe 50 naira to uh, 170 naira, you are done for the, for the day you can go and sleep and give you enough energy. Undukwe has turned this ordinary cereal, which she first started selling out of her car to friends, into a booming business with over 80 vendors across Nigeria. She's also working on a dry option for exports as she tests the market among Nigeria's large diaspora population looking for a taste of home. So we are exporting but not in large scale to even meet the demand of this product from outside of the country. But we're exporting to the U.S. and to the U.K. And then people travel with the product by themselves to places like Canada, Cyprus, South Africa, Germany, and from many, to many other places as well. The product's packaging seems to be its unique selling point. While PAP has been sold in open-air markets in light plastic bags for years, Unless it's consumed or refrigerated within three days, it can go bad. It's well packaged, so I consider my family would prefer it to the local one, which is um, usually sold in open. Nigeria is going through its worst economic crisis in years due to a fall in global oil prices. The government wants to win itself off oil and is encouraging local business to create wealth and boost employment. And given the state of the Nigerian economy and the challenging business environment, industrial pharmacists are looking to channel more energy to the optimization of local raw materials for pharmaceutical compositions. 
The chief executive of Jill Pharmaceuticals, Mr. Benson Ogubamiwa, tells Channel's business producer, Temple Eshadju, how the plan can bridge foreign exchange gaps in pharmaceutical investing. We are all looking forward to Dangote succeeding with the petrochemical plant somewhere in Ekpe, in Lagos, because you see some of the raw, in fact, a lot of the raw materials will now be available locally. And when those uh, um, raw materials, active pharmaceutical ingredients, we call them, are available locally, the excipients are also available locally. Do you realize that the costs of um, those drugs that now are manufactured locally with the local content, the raw materials coming, will be much, much cheaper than importing the raw materials uh, from other nations of the world that have been draining our economy over the past years. Nigeria has a lot of raw material potentials. Uh, you would have noted that Dangote is going to petrochemicals, and one of the fallouts of these petrochemicals is the fact that the downstream of it, the pharmaceutical industries, will be able to source some of their raw materials. And we are looking forward to uh, Acon also coming in to look at the opportunities to play uh, in this downstream of petrochemical industry. Currently, resident doctors are on strike in the country. What is the cost of this industrial action on pharmaceutical investment? It cannot be quantified, just as you know. Uh, first of all, when you have industrial actions, a lot of the, we call them POM, prescription-only medicines, which the doctors, the prescribers are supposed to, after doing their due uh, analysis of the pathophysiology of disease conditions, they make their, uh, their appropriate prescriptions. That helps to save costs because the patient actually gets the right prescription. And like when the cardiologists are not there, when the risk specialists are not there, uh, you realize that there are drugs that ordinarily uh, a lot of people will not, even pharmacists will not venture into prescribing or, uh, or giving to their patients. And those products, that, you know, a lot of the, the what's it called, uh, decisions made by the doctors before they do their prescriptions, a lot of them are also based on clinical findings, the use of state-of-the-art equipment and all of that. Once the economy, once these people, the, the, the resident doctor or the medical practitioners shut down the, the system, it will impact on what happens in the pharmacies. It's going to impact on what happens to the economy of the nation in itself. And for us who are importers and distributors of this drug, you are not able to do business with good institutions and even those who buy some of these um, uh, core ethical drugs are not able to set them off their shelves because they are not having prescriptions uh, flowing from the prescribers to their various outlets. So definitely, it will impact on our own economy. I mean, you've imported products, you're not able to sell them, and you have your deadlines to meet, you have your obligations and all of that. Definitely, it will affect the uh, individual economy as well as the economy of the nation. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adebayo.